Uh, so El Salvador is already an example for some things in the world. Um, the security law has been a success. Um, I think even the opponents of the, of the president, it's hard for them to deny that. Um, and around the world, I mean, uh, in the US, it's getting less safe, you know, objectively. Uh, in other parts of the world, probably as well. Other parts of Latin America, more, you know, kind of more in the backyard of El Salvador, uh, they're saying, we, you know, we want, we want security, we want safety. El Salvador will become more of an example externally. Live here once again from Bitcoin Beach, and today I have my new friend Klusk joining us. Uh, it's amazing, like every week I meet people who have moved to El Salvador, a lot of them have been here for you know quite a while, and it seems like we continue to have more expats from around the world deciding to, to make El Salvador home. So tell us a little bit about your story, uh, if, was it Bitcoin that brought you here, and how long you've been here, what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, it's good to be here. I mean, I, I remember kind of hearing about El Salvador, about the project, about the Bitcoin Beach project, um, inspiring story. Um, I mean, I came here uh, April 2022 after the Miami conference. I was working for Strike at the time as an engineer and just kind of curious, like about El Salvador. It's in the news. It's in Twitter. Kind of like what's and I was just kind of here like, OK, what's the delta? Like, what is reality? You know, what's what's on the timeline? Um, and so drop down, yeah, Semana Santa last, you know, April, 2022, uh, came. And, and that was, so that was really a year after the initial announcement. Yes. Yeah. So nine months after the implementation of the law or eight months. Yeah. Um, and like, I mean, I came here, I speak, spoke a bit of Spanish, like felt like, okay, I can work, work remote, you know, work, uh, push code from, from El Salvador. Um, we had, you know, have an office here. It just seemed like a great, great you were, fit. You were working for Strike. For Strike, yeah. yeah. So um, came down here and just just really liked it. Fell in love with like the country, the, the, the country itself, like the land is beautiful. You have the ocean, you have volcanoes, you have, you know, kind of everything in between. It felt like a tropical California, like when you hit down. Um, you know, it's tropical and like the, but like a bit rainier, you know, a bit, a bit, a bit more lush. Uh, so, um, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's been a great, you know, year, year and a couple months, uh, since I, since I got here. And it wasn't, so you weren't here officially with the, the strike office here. You were just working remote and you could kind of work wherever you wanted. And so you wanted to experience what was happening here. Yeah. Like it, it seemed, I was just too curious to, to avoid it, uh, felt like the rest of the world, you know, is kind of grinding to a halt or, or stopping or just maybe just a bit boring. Um, so, yeah, I yeah made, made the leap, uh, came down here and I wasn't here like full time, but like I would go back to the US for, you know, I stayed here like a few weeks, went back to the US for a month, came back here and my visits to the US just got shorter and shorter to the point where it was like, OK, I live here now. I haven't been back, uh, you know. Uh, in a few months and and so uh, you know there's always a reason to go back uh not not trying to escape uh but it's just uh the allure i guess of, yeah. of el salvador what were you staying in san salvador most of the time or were you did you stay on the coast at all or what was the a bit mostly mostly in san salvador yeah so i got a place in escalon um you know commuted into the office in san benito for a bit uh just explored the city kind of explored the country on the weekend so took trips to the beach, took trips to the mountains, to Ataco, Huayua, Huachapan, to La Union, and, and just trying to like understand El Salvador. What, what you know, it's, it's fun for me, like independent of Bitcoin, just like check out, check out places, practice the Spanish a bit and uh, make it, you know, kind of round out the edges of, of the understanding of it. For, for people who haven't visited yet, how would you, it's hard to explain El Salvador to people because there is so much variety. I mean, it's a small country, but there's so many different microclimates and settings. So mm -hmm. 
how do you explain it to your friends? Like what else Salvador's like? It's hard. It's hard to convince people. There's like the Satoshi quote where it's like, uh, you know, I, I don't want to sound jaded, but it's like it, I don't have time to explain to you, uh, you know, basically like I, I just don't have time if you don't get it by now. Um, maybe that's maybe that's easier to say, like in 2023. But like when I got here, you know, I would I would talk about, you know, talk about Bitcoin Beach. I was impressed with the waves. I mean, the consistency. I mean, there's surfing tournaments last week, this week. Um, the whole like vibe, it felt like a really natural beach town. Like there's not, uh, it's not like super built up in like this way that seems overly commercial. You know, maybe maybe people, you know, have criticisms uh, somewhat valid, maybe, I, I don't know. But, you know, it, there's not like these massive high rides. It's, it's very like comfortable in yeah. this sort of natural way. It seems almost effortless. Um, El Zante, like, you know, 45 minutes from the city, El Tunco, like a little bit closer. Uh, and just this whole like kind of stretch of beach is a special place for me now. But I think I kind of got it even a little bit of the taste like when I came here at the beginning. Well, I think the thing that really makes a difference is just the, the local people. They're mm -hmm. just so friendly and accommodating, but not in like a overly aggressive way. Sometimes you go places and everybody wants to be your best friend because they want to sell you something and they're, you know, all up in your face here. Mm -hmm. People kind of leave you alone. But if you choose to interact with them, they're very friendly and helpful. Yeah. Uh, which even when things were really rough here, I found that even in mm -hmm. dangerous parts of the city, once you start talking to somebody, sometimes they might even been a gang member. But once you kind of start interacting with them, this kind of natural warmness came out. And so I think it's just a very ingrained part of the culture. Yeah. Salvadorans are, are, are great, great people. I, I, yeah, lots of great friends now, fortunate to, to say that I, um, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So did you make like a concerted choice to move here or did it just wind up that this was where you're spending your time. I mean, is this where you're going going forward? This is home for you. This is certainly home. I, I felt that when I went to the, the Bitcoin Miami conference most recently, I was just so, so happy to get back here. Um, and uh, just like, ah, like just even like just driving on the way back, just like this feeling of relief. I think it takes time. Yeah. Like it, it takes a certain amount of time to view a place as home uh, And you know, it depends. I think a year, you know, if you're set, if you're to set, you know, a specific time a year, if you're somewhere, that's that's going to feel like home. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think I think like El Salvador has momentum. Um, it, there's this pull. There's this allure. When you leave it, you feel like ever like personally, I feel like everywhere else is sort of s a bit stuck. Um, uh, you know, I, I love the United States. I mean, it's home. It's it's a special place. Family's there. Um, but I felt like El Salvador is trying out new things. Uh, doesn't feel like a lot of the, the rest of the world. I was in Europe recently. Um, Europe is extremely beautiful. There's tons of different cultures, tons of different, uh, you know, history, art, culture. I mean, it's incredible, but it feels like a museum more and more I go. Uh, it's the past. It feels like the past it could be a beautiful future uh, as well. But at the moment, you know, I'm 30. Uh, I'd like to live life. And I can't wait around for, uh, you know, everyone else to change. I have to go where there's momentum. And I think young men, maybe specifically, it's so easier for me to identify, you know, young men that are younger than me, like, who's this like old head, 30 year old guy. Um, but I felt like, yeah, like El Salvador has momentum. If you want to start something, they want like people want you to start it. There's opportunity. Uh, there's not a million rules stopping you. Um, so. Getting back to the question was like, yeah, why? I felt like that momentum. So, so uh, you, you were mentioning that. even at the the conference in Miami, you felt like the momentum was at the El Salvador booth there. That, Absolutely, that, that was where you were naturally drawn. I to. love I love my friends, Mike. Yes, <laughs> I love my friends. Um, I think I think they're changing the world. Uh, I think people here are changing the world. I think you're changing the world, and you've already done that. Um, and I think if anyone else wants to change the world, they should uh, they should consider El Salvador. Um, you can do that. I think the past 20 years, people have have really influential people have written code and have, uh, you know, all the whole Web2 thing, you'd move out to Silicon Valley, you'd move to New York, you know, you'd, you'd write you'd write code for these apps that touch millions and billions of people. Um, and I think those apps are kind of, you know, becoming more stale in the world of Bitcoin is, is becoming 
well, has become over the past 10, five years has become the place where like the brightest minds go, the, the people who want to impact and kind of change something. And, and there's, there's more than a software component. There's, there's the real, the real world. There's the real tangible Bitcoin world. And that's also here. Um, uh, and I, I hope it touches more. I hope it goes everywhere. Yeah. Um, yes. And I think that's very, that's where it's very distinct from the crypto world where I feel like in mm. the, the crypto world, it's more of the like, hey, we're going to live in the metaverse. We're going to do everything from our computer screen where I feel like you, there is a, a big distinction in most Bitcoiners. They, they want to be physically present in the natural world. Yes. But utilizing this digital tool and not necessarily mixing them both in a way where you just never leave your computer screen all day. Yeah. It's nice to touch the water, touch the sand. Beef and Bitcoin seem like they're this, you know, almost linked thing at this point. That's the official food of, of Bitcoin. Um, the, the yeah, the real world is it feels like it's at a standstill in other places. I, I sound maybe like a broken record. Uh, but yeah, like Bitcoiners have this have this yearning to to do something in the real world. I mean, there's like digital communities. So the, like the Bitcoin, like every forum, every group chat, every, you know, these kind of digital communities, they're looking for a place to find home. Um, in not even just in Bitcoin, like there's tons of digital communities of, of all types that are, have some merit, right? Um, and I think, yeah, the, the El Salvador experiment um, that's kind of being confirmed day by day uh, is proving that this is an interesting place to bridge the gap now and complete the loop between we were once physical in the physical world and there, there was kind of this digital you know, kind of interactions, um, gamers, Bitcoiners, whomever, Pinterest users, uh, and they could uh, kind of maybe maybe find a home here and sort of close the loop in, in sort of this interesting way. And it sounds from, from the little bit you were telling me before we started that one, one of your projects is really focused, I think, primarily on young men who are both engaged in the intellectual space, but also, you know, fitness is something that's important to them. Is, is that is that sum it up or can you give me a better explanation of uh, what that project is? Yes. So Palestra uh, is it's a fraternal network for uh, for fitness based on on kind of uh, the principles of uh, eating well, working out, staying healthy. And, you know, we accept members that are, you know, bodybuilders to people like myself or some, you know, somewhat average normal uh and those that that are just starting this fitness journey um but we ask we ask a couple of questions during the interview process the application uh that gauge you know kind of creativity the ability to think freely um kind of abstract concepts uh we ask you know a very telian question of what's something that you think you know that you believe that no one else agrees with you on um so we're trying to look for a certain type of candidate that you know, is, is, is wants to get fit, but also is capable of leadership. Um, and, uh, we believe, I mean, that also that that's a resource for any, any place, any government, any corporation. Um, and, uh, also that these guys might feel isolated. They might be, you know, kind of online. Uh, they might, you know, have found digital communities, you know, other guys who kind of think the same, but don't, uh, you know, don't, you don't have the opportunity to do that in, the, yeah. in, in their in their world. So so yeah, Palestra, yeah, pretty excited. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of great great members and and kind of are growing. No, I I love that idea because I think specifically in the last decade, I've been surprised at how many young men don't have the drive to get up and do things anymore. Like literally, they're just sitting around playing video games or. In fact, even when you see solo travelers here to El Salvador, a lot of times it's it's the women that are more adventurous than the men. And so I think we have this whole generation of men that have somehow lost their sense of what it means to be a man and to and to lead. So mm -hmm. I think it's crucial that we have organizations like what you were talking about that are kind of drive these young men and give them a sense that they're not alone in this and there is purpose in things. So I'm, I'm very intrigued by that idea. Absolutely. Uh, how long has it been going on and how many members do you guys have? And then, yeah, yeah that, give me a little bit more details about Absolutely. what it entails. Yeah. So we just started a month or two ago. Uh, so we, we had applications starting uh, in mid-April 
Um, and and how how would have people have heard about this? Just so word it, of mouth or certain communities or yes, uh, good question. So we're we're just really based on Twitter and Urbit right now. So so the main the main push is on Twitter, um, and really it's just Twitter and word of mouth kind of within Twitter within group chats. Um, so we we have somewhere I, I'd have to check. We're probably at about seventy five members now, um, and. We have a lot more applications. Uh, apologies to anyone uh, who's applied that we haven't got to your application. Um, but uh, we were kind of continuing to grow pretty steadily. Um, and just with really high quality guys, kind of, you know, younger than myself, most of them, and uh, just focusing on on kind of fitness, nutrition, a bit of regimen. Um, and then we're also having an event here in, a, in about two months uh, at a at a you know a hotel nearby um so we'll we'll have different speakers we'll have kind of dj sets we'll it, like it won't be just as like mundane conference where you just sit and watch uh watch a guy ramble um for for hours but and yeah. and being a member what does that entail there's certain yeah. requirements that that you maintain or mm -hmm. certain meetups you go to or yes tasks you accomplish or so it's it's right now basically we provide a nutrition plan uh we provide workout plans um and then we also kind of are, are leveraging the fact that we're filtering really well from other members so we find that members are really engaged with each other that maybe similar stage in life uh, maybe similar goals some of them work at maybe startups or starting their own businesses and are also kind of you know after after you reach kind of the fitness and the sort of creativity element you're, you're sort of able to find out other things that you have in common. Um, and so members are, you know, working on different projects uh, kind of organically within within the Palestra community. And is Bitcoin a common thread throughout that or is it not really? Yeah, we only take Bitcoin. Okay. Um, so the membership fee is in Bitcoin. The tickets for any events are Bitcoin. Um, and really the end goal of, of Palestra as we progress is to create the believe the world's first Bitcoin only village or or it will be a Bitcoin only village or town here in El Salvador. Um, which, so a physical location that people will move to. to, to yes. Uh, and we'll start. We'll basically start with with the gymnasium, uh, the palestra, the palestra, right in Greek. Um, and uh, that will be that will be kind of the uh, if some some guys kind of want to go monk mode, they want to just lift and work on their projects. Uh, that could be a, probably an excellent place to do so, uh, as well as as well as other things. Um, but yeah, the idea is is basically to culminate in 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 that. Okay. Now, did you was the genesis of this project after you had moved to El Salvador, or was this something mm -hmm. that had already existed? And I think you were saying you guys have actually legally organized the the business here in El Salvador and set up a corporation for that. Is that yeah? It all happened here. It all happened here. So uh, my. My co-founder, um, we actually we actually met on Twitter as well. Um, I will keep him. I'll keep him anonymous for the sake of this. But we um, we were just here in El Salvador in actually in March, just kind of thinking about you know this this idea how El Salvador is special. Um, there have been sort of other charter city projects that have been somewhat successful, really interesting projects, a um, lot of interesting members. Uh, but the jurisdiction has proved to be a, a challenge, um, you know, whether it's the Mediterranean, uh, you know, the Greeks don't really like giving up their islands. Um, they're not going to sell them for unlimited amount of money. I don't know if you could buy, uh, you know, Mykonos, um, uh, other, you know, there's other challenges elsewhere. Um, El Salvador is completely unique in the truest sense of the word unique. Uh, I believe I believe that. Um, whether it's the leadership, whether it's the government, there's kind of a bunch of things that came together that have to come together to make something special. One thing, you know, if you're really, really tall, you might not be good at basketball. You should be, but maybe you're not, right? Uh, so El Salvador has this like special traje trajectory. And I think, um, you know, everyone's riding a wave of, of one sort or another. So, so how, and, and I always struggle to like convey this to people yes. without them physically being present here. Uh, I don't. Maybe you can do a better job at it than than I can. But how do you how do you convey to people the 
the sense of hope and excitement. Mm. It's not just just specifically around Bitcoin, but like the Bitcoin element is synergistic with it. Like it combines mm. with the sense of, hey, this is a, a place where the government wants to say yes to things. They want businesses to thrive. You're seeing some of the smartest and brightest from around the world choose to, to sell everything and pick up stakes and move to El Salvador and, and plan on their children growing up here. That combined with the, the local talent that for, is being kind of unshackled absolutely at the same time. So how how can we convey to people who aren't here like just what's happening here? It's it's I, I, I somewhat do this on Twitter. I try to. Um, but I find like the only way to, to do it is to just come. It's really hard to to like pull someone out and say like, this like wake up man um you know uh, i felt like i was doing that at the miami conference people probably thought i was insane um but yeah the uh it's you know you have to come see it for yourself call me uh you know i'll, I'll, uh, I'll help you out uh that's what i say like if you need anything just drop down and i'll take care of you know everything else um i mean have you had any friends come and be disappointed no, I honestly haven't. I have another friend who's coming in five days. Uh, you know, I have a friend who's here right now, like at the house, you know, uh, and everyone kind of is they, they come here with a preconceived notion of like what El Salvador is. They kind of think it's it's going to be, you know, like Beirut uh, after after, you know, a bombing or something. They, they imagine a much worse place. Uh, and I mean, like in the past year, I've seen significant improvement. Uh, as well, and it just seems to be accelerating almost, uh, which doesn't seem to like, uh, like scientifically be possible, but it, it kind of is. Uh, but I think, um, yeah, the El Salvador experiment, it's, uh, it's a cool thing. And, you know, again, uh, I can't convince you just, just, just take the flight. I think there's like 15 new cities in the U S that have direct flights. It's, it's some absurd number now, uh, Houston, Miami, Dallas, DC, like, I don't know. It's like everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a ton of, I mean, from places like Miami, I think it's only like two and a half hours. That's my flight. Yeah, so I, it's, it's it's short. And uh, Houston is, I think, two and a half or three hours. I mean, it's, even LA is four and a half. So mm. The return flights, they always have a pollo campero on. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Your plane will uh, smell like chicken going home. Yeah, that. it will. <laughs> it's all right. It's, uh, I think that's been one of the most exciting things this last couple of years is just this influx of new excitement and new blood from around the world that coming in and actually a lot of Salvadorans returning that had fled here at one time that now see there being more opportunity here than the US or Europe or Canada or wherever they were at. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced that at all since you've been here? Have you seen people kind of in, in where you're living in the city? Do you see and kind of an influx of new blood in that area or what what has been your experience i don't know if it's just here in el zante that i see it more or yeah yeah no i i've seen you know as as an expat you always kind of like to be in on the, like the secret like you're, you're here before anyone else i mean you you probably know this better than almost uh almost anyone i assume um and so i see my super select those like a couple like more gringos uh you know in the aisles uh and i'm always i i sometimes chat i'm like what are you doing here and and it's funny like a lot of people aren't coming for Bitcoin. Like some do, some kind of get it. They're like, oh yeah, like I forgot about that. Um, and then others, you know, are here for are here for Bitcoin. In the city, there's probably more of a mix. Here in El Sante, I'm sure it's almost, you know, 100% uh, kind of Bitcoin focused people. Um, but a lot of interesting people. I mean, I'm living in Escalon. All the guys passing through the house that I, I'm, I stay in, kind of a house on the hill. Um, they is it hard... like a like a communal house or it's is... sort of like a hacker house, okay. um, you know, kind of remote workers working on different software projects. Uh, I live there, a couple other guys, but all the guys went to like Harvard or they went to like, you know, these are like and they're all like 24. Like I'm like old and went to Florida State. So, you know, and I, mostly from the U.S. or from all over or from the U.S., from from Europe. We had this uh, we had this Estonian guy. Um, uh, we had a, a Swede. Yeah, kind of you know, kind of from all over. Uh, and, you know, uh, and is this as, as part of the it's Palestra, right? Palestra. Palestra. Is that part of the Palestra group or is that no, but I'm separate from that. I'm stealing these guys for okay. Palestra. They're just too good to uh, to pass up some of them. Uh, but no, they're they're passing through working on different software, you know, different projects. And you uh, just know them from Twitter or kind of. Yeah. Uh, actually, one of the guys I was in Altunco. 
uh, like a few months ago. Uh, I was kind of at this club with with this girl, and the guy walks up to me and it's like shows me my profile picture from Twitter. And is like, is this you? Uh, and that's how we actually met. And then he introduced me to, to some of these other guys. Uh, uh, fuzzy, fuzzy memory, but it was a, a good one. Um, is it, isn't your picture on, on Twitter, like the back of your head or something? It is wasn't it? at the time. Oh, okay. I okay. was, I was a fan. I was, <laughs> I'm not anon, uh, much. Yeah. Much. Yeah. I'll have to create another anon account. Uh, it kind of ruined it and totally face doxing now. So it's really over. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, that's, um, that's the thing I think a lot of Bitcoiners struggle with is they want to remain anonymous, but there's mm. so many exciting things that they want to be a part of and promote. And it's sometimes it's hard to, to juggle the, those two things. Well, I think that the thing in the back of a lot of Anon's heads, like, has my OPSEC really been that good? No. Like, if someone wants to dox me, it's possible. No. Uh, so I think, like, that's the thing. I was like, ah, you know. All my old colleagues follow me. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think like Bitcoiners, I think this is a trend just across like, I think it's just an enduring trend like this an Anon thing. But then like now the Anons want to meet and then they have to create new Anon identities. And there's this kind of cycle uh, I need to make. Again, I need to make one. Uh, we'll see what my profile picture is. Maybe a, a surfer or something. I don't know. So what do you see as the the biggest promise in El Salvador? I mean, what are you seeing 10 years from now is what you describe to people, what you see coming? Do you think like Bitcoin City is going to be a driver? Is it going to be just the influx of, of people and locals returning and freedom that kind of ignites the animal spirits that they just start creating and leading the world forward? Or how do you explain it to people? Yeah, so I think there's two things. There's So there's internally in El Salvador, um, there it's going to be growth. I mean, people, uh, people talk about, I was, I was on a boat, uh, I was on a boat, um, in the Golfo de Fonseca and I was in kind of La Union and they're pointing at Bitcoin city. They're, you know, just like kind of giving a tour of kind of what's going to happen on that coastline. Uh, and I imagine like, uh, frontiersmen from, you know, centuries past, uh, kind of traveling to, to undeveloped regions, kind of beautiful, pristine places that need to be actually protected uh, as well as developed. Uh, and there was a sense that came across me like, ah, oh, this is probably like kind of like Hong Kong in the 19th century or Singapore. I mean, when it was, you know, when, when these places were fishing villages uh, and there was just like the sense of destiny that like now El Salvador for um, f several different reasons is special in this way. It's unique in, in the sense of the word, truest sense of the word. Um, there's kind of this internal development that's going to happen. We all see it here. You see slowly by slowly, year by year. Uh, I mean, I've only been here one. You've been here more, right? Uh, and just seeing the, seeing the growth and development. Well, and it's, it's accelerating. At it's first, I yes. thought maybe this is just a temporary blip or sugar high after the Bitcoin mm. bill passed. But really, it's just continued to accelerate. And mm. I, I honestly think we're still at the early stages. I think five years from now, it's going to be a totally different world here. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do, too. And then and so there's the internal like El Salvador development and then there's the external impact that 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 has. Uh, so El Salvador is already an example for some things in the world. Um, the security law has been a success. Um, I think even the opponents of the, of the president, it's hard for them to deny that. Um, and around the world, I mean, uh, in the US, it's getting less safe, you know, objectively uh, in other parts of the world, probably as well. Other parts of Latin America, more, you know, kind of more in the backyard of El Salvador, uh, they're saying, we, you know, we want we want security, we want safety. Um, and I think as things continue to diverge, which it feels like that's happening, um, El Salvador will become more of an example externally of we want, um, you know, we want we want Bukele to, to rule our country, uh, you know, uh, maybe not literally, but we want we want some of these ideas. Uh, it's working, uh, and um, yeah. Well, there, there's a couple things I want to touch on. One, yes. I I do think <laughs> I do think that 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 is you know maybe his swing for the fences goal is he would like to see a united Central America that I think he would like to rule over. Um, I, he's he's posted some things online with 
former generals that ruled during the time where Central America was all one place. So I think there's a little foreshadowing there. Now, whether that would be a good thing or a bad thing, that, that's an open question. But as far as the other thing, you strike me as somebody that would be kind of libertarian minded. Is, would that be a good description? Mm, I used to be quite libertarian. Okay. I voted for John McAfee. Uh, that was my, I believe my first vote cast was in the libertarian primary in 2016. Uh, what a character. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you, know, uh, you know, if I'm out on a boat somewhere, somewhere in this part of the world, you know, kind of McAfee maxing, uh, you know, uh, vicariously. But, um, you know, I, I, I certainly think like, that, how would you, where I'm going with it, how would you wrestle with, because this is what people always ask. Yeah. Okay, this is, you know, they would call it an authoritarian state that is, you know, instituting a police state here. Mm. And so how would you respond to that? I mean, I know my response, but I'm just curious as to what your response would be. Yeah, yeah. I would say that uh, democracy is uh, not what it's sold as. Uh and uh, there's a lot of different ways of governance um, in that basically, uh, you know, a lot of the detractors of, of, the current, of the current president and maybe similar figures are, uh, you know, funding color revolutions in countries that are smaller, that are weaker, that are poorer than the United States, than the UK, than Germany, than France, uh, and that they're a bit a bit hypocritical um you know there are some names uh that come to mind specifically uh but uh but i think you know any criticism of of the current administration should come with the the caveat of uh you know if it's the human rights foundation funding color revolutions in belarus eh, maybe they should probably check that out that's what i always push back on them because you never really hear you hear the criticism but you don't hear what they would do differently. So how, how would you, you know, I was asked, well, what would you suggest? Because obviously what was happening before was was unsustainable and, you know, literally thousands of people were losing their lives and these things are never clean and easy. It's always going to be messy. So that's what I always like to push back on people is, yeah, hey, if if you were living here during that time and you understood what was happening and you mm -hmm. have some criticisms, Let's talk. But if you, you know, are living in your safe place and you don't understand what the people here were going through, maybe show a little deference to, to their point of view on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 true. That's 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 a good way of putting it. That's a bit more, you know. Uh, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Um, you know, like I, I, you know, I like I like girls typically that are a bit leftists. Uh, they're kind of like, you know, artistic uh, types. You know, they might typically not like an authoritarian uh, leader like like the one we have. Um, but even they say, yeah, the guy in my neighborhood, he's not selling drugs anymore. Uh, it's cleaner. Like my mom can walk at 930 at night. But but, you know, and then they have some reason yeah. why, you know, yeah. but but ultimately it's like, OK, so if you've got if you've got the, like the 21 year old, uh, you know, kind of graffiti artist girl, then then I think you're doing a good job. Uh, yeah, no, I, and I, but I do think it's it's good to have critics. It's good to have people to bring things up. And Absolutely. it's good to talk about these things. But I always tell them, hey, you're going to have much more credibility if you at least acknowledge that this is a complex and nuanced situation. Um, but, but getting back more to just what life is like in El Salvador, curious as to how you found just social life, outdoor life, cost of living, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you'd looked around much before you decided where to live, but curious as to why you decided on Escalon. We have a lot of viewers that are thinking about moving to El Salvador that are thinking through all these things. So yeah. any color you can put on any of those subjects. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, Escalon, I mean, like San Benito and Escalon are like the two kind of neighborhoods that everyone, you know, kind of talks. Oh, OK, like these are more developed. They're kind of closer to the nightlife and, and things. Um, so I basically just booked an Airbnb uh, kind of at the edge of Escalon um, near near San Benito and, uh, you know, kind of converted that guy into, you know, kind of month to month and, and, and negotiated the rate. Uh, I would say regarding costs in El Salvador, I mean, I'm fortunate to to have income, you know, sometimes from the United States or from elsewhere. Uh, but I imagine for for Salvadorans, it's it's not cheap. No. 
Uh, it's not a cheap place. Uh, if you want, you know, if you only want a place that's cheap, then I would say Mexico or Guatemala are cheaper. Um, uh, El Salvador is not quite as expensive as Costa Rica, uh, but it's it's more expensive than Mexico and Guatemala um, in my experience. Uh, so I'd say like that. Um, for 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 a single person that wants to live, you know, a, a lifestyle that's not dramatically different than they were living in the U.S., what would you say they need to plan on uh, as a monthly basis for a mm, income budget? Probably twenty five hundred or three thousand. Uh, depends how you live. Depends yeah. how often you eat out. You could do it cheaper, but a guy, you know, kind of want to eat out a bit, go out. That, that's about maybe a thousand dollars a month for rent. Something, something about about there. Yeah, yeah, in Escalon or or yeah, yeah, yeah. And what what I found is you get a lot more for your money in Escalon versus San Benito, even though they're pretty close to each other. It, it seems like there's more deals in Escalon. Yeah, it's it's San Benito. It's like. It's just terribly designed. Like <laughs> I don't, don't want to critique. You know, I'm a visitor in the country, uh, but like two concentric circles, eh, eh, it's probably not the best way to, to do it. And I think they're probably like thinking the same thing. Uh, is that you know that area is really nice. It's modernizing. Yeah. There's great restaurants and, and bars kind of in that area. But uh, but yeah, I also like that as well about Escalon. Like it just just makes a bit more sense. Um, and but but you know, there's there's actually the, the nice thing about El Salvador and San Salvador is actually more areas are getting nicer uh, as opposed to like, yeah, maybe other parts of the world. So like, yeah, you can start exploring new places. I mean, I am I'm I might be moving, might be going to Antigua Cuscalan in the south or, or Santa Elena. Uh -huh. um, but uh, like up in the hills or down closer to Price Mart in that area? Well, I can't dox not, not too doxing much. for your exact <laughs> location. No, but, you know, I, I think there's tens of thousands of people live over there. So I think we'll be able to find you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I Kind of, and I like Antigua Cuscatlán. I kind of like these, like, uh, San Salvador is like the metro area is basically a collection of like five or seven towns. You know, there's like Santa Tecla, which is like, these are all like pueblos, yeah. like, and San, San Salvador is not. San Salvador is like the city, right? Um, but but yeah, they all blend together They now. blend together yeah. now. And, and kind of this like, yeah, like, like Antigua Cuscatlán and, and Santa Tecla are like kind of well, you know, like I like that, like, yeah, aesthetic. I hope Centro Historico, I think... I think over the next year or two, Centro Historico is going to become more of a place that people go. Uh, and, and that'll be kind of cool to see those buildings be revitalized. Uh, I don't think I'd want to live there, though, because it's also at a lower elevation. And so it's the heat. It's a lot warmer there where Antigua Cuscalan and Santa Tecla have almost idyllic weather. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's really nice in those zones. So absolutely, that's what I always tell people is. There's a lot, even within San Salvador, the, the temperature can vary quite a bit. So mm. check around a bit. We have a, a condo in, in Escalon, kind of over by uh, Diagnostico, the hospital Diagnostico. Yeah. And it, it's the weather generally is just very pleasant. Mm -hmm. So I like mm -hmm. that area. But even if you go higher up on the volcano, it can get actually quite cool. And so there's it's, some. It's quite nice. Yeah. And like Cumbre de la Escalon, like if you go up. Yeah. Yeah. It's very cool. No, I have some some friends that live way pretty high up on there and they sometimes will be complaining about how cold it is in their house. I'm like, come on. Heavy I'm is here the at head the beach. that wears the uh, crown. Yes. Yeah. I'm here at the beach sweating <laughs> and they're telling me how how cold it is. But you know, it's mm -hmm. obviously relative. Uh, mm -hmm. it's not like they need to turn their heater on or something, but it's um that's mm -hmm. what's nice when you have those kind of higher elevation locales at you know, this close to the equator, you don't you know, some of the locations you don't need heat or cooling and so it's it's quite pleasant yeah i don't have ac really yeah okay yeah at the beach you need it but in yeah a you get places, enough of a breeze we yeah. have a pool too that doesn't hurt yeah nice. so what would you tell people that are wanting to come to el salvador but don't have the ability to to work remotely is it something do you feel like there's a lot of potentials for people to come and start up businesses if so what opportunities do you see? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you you know, the, the number I referenced earlier, 2,500, 3,000, you know, uh, can be can be a bit lower if you try. Uh, so, I mean, if you save up five, you know, a few thousand bucks, you can you can last your, you know, maybe a long time, you know, a few months. Right. And, and then think of think of things kind of start something. I think there's opportunities in almost every industry, um, whether it's, you know, information like you know, software, 
Uh, there's Bitcoin businesses that are growing here, that are hiring. Uh, there's, you know, across every across every industry, uh, agriculture as well. I'm seeing like, you know, I think you had on the uh, guy from Beef Back Better, yep. right? This is a growing, you know, industry as well, trying to localize. Uh, and I think the government is really trying to push for for really improving the quality of of the food here. Um, new farming techniques, uh, borrow, borrowing the best ideas from around the world and trying to incorporate them here uh, in areas where there might be lagging behind a bit. Um, and so I think, yeah, bringing, you know, whatever you've been doing, if you have an expertise, I would say, um, you know, hone in on that, really find out what makes you, you know, unique, good at something. Sounds like a cliche, um, but, uh, but then, it, you know, use that, exploit that, you know, in, in the positive way, push that, so. I really see with with all these people coming in from around the world, there's demand for things that have never existed here before or for quality of of mm -hmm. items that haven't been available before. So I think there's going to be all these new markets opening up, whether it's in air conditioning or window manufacturing or agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's kind of like this new, like you're saying, like a new frontier. Yeah. And so... For people that are young, especially, I think there's much more opportunity here. The potential to have a profitable business with actually much less competition than you would face in, in US or Europe, I think the profit margins here could actually be better. And this would just, outside the idealism of using Bitcoin, just from a, a purely pragmatic standpoint, would be a better place to open a business. Yes, I'm a pragmatist uh, in this regard as well. I think. Yeah, that, um, yeah, El Salvador is open for business. The government's very supportive. Uh, you know, um, I've noticed, yeah, pe people have been successful already in just the short time I've been here over the past year, um, which has kind of inspired me to, you know, work on my own things. Uh, when I when I was laid off you know, a few months ago, it's like wondering, you know, what, what to do. Uh, I'm here, you know, I'm here in El Salvador, you know, and I thought, okay, you know, I'll start something. Uh, you know, a couple of my colleagues who were laid off at the same time, I, I look at their GitHub the next day, they're con contributing to new projects. You know, they're working on things. A lot of them are also working some, some here, some, some elsewhere. Um, and, you know, I think that energy, that like drive to, to do something is like very, it's, it's, it doesn't feel like it's lost. Like there's like the, the Michael Saylor thing of like thermodynamic, you know, uh, like Bitcoin, energy there's like energy in everything and and like there's energy in your work there's energy in your thoughts and that like work energy is is very well preserved and utilized here in el salvador where it feels like you know maybe in the us like you could work 30 percent harder but there's like no benefit there's like no payoff uh right you're just gonna get taxed more so yeah. it's like you know uh there's there's no quiet quitting going on in el salvador people are pushing forward and and building things it feels like Absolutely. Yeah. What would you say on, on the practical level as far as using Bitcoin? How, how much of your life are you actually spending Bitcoin? What mm -hmm. do you say to people that, you know, when they ask, is it real? Mm -hmm. I say, well, first I say like, sometimes I'm a, I'm a bit cynical. I say like, have you used Bitcoin in the past month to them? The answer is typically no. Uh, and like the answer for me is yes, right? I pay my Tigo bill, I pay Super Selectos, I pay my rent. Uh, I pay like a lot of the major things, not everything, uh, but like, you know, for some of the criticism Chivo has gotten, the ATMs work just fine. You can easily, you know, uh, get money out, get 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 US dollars out and pay in cash. You can pay with credit card. Uh, you know, like, again, more vendors here accept it per capita than anywhere else in the world. Uh, and yeah, I, I sort of uh, sort of push back on them a little bit. Uh, it's it's more than a hobby in El Salvador. Yeah. And when you spend using Bitcoin, is it more from a, a sense of duty and idealism, or that it's just easier and more convenient, or what? What is generally your motivation to to pay with Bitcoin versus another method? Yeah, sometimes it's it's literally just easier. Uh, like for for example, like the phone bill. Uh, the rent is literally just easier uh, uh, with super select. Was it hard getting your landlord to accept Bitcoin? Surprisingly not. Um, but that's that's probably fortunate. 
Um, but I feel like I'm uh, blessed with good fortune. So I'll just ride that wave. And and were they Bitcoiners <laughs> before that? Or it was just like, hey, I want to pay my rent in Bitcoin. And they're like, oh, OK. I think I think they thought it was cool. I think they thought like, oh, like no one ever's asked this. I'll like, yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> you know, there's a novelty uh, to it. Uh, and like, oh, look at this, like, you know, foreign guy. He, 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 he wants, you know, he wants to use his tokens. OK, we'll let him do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's I sometimes forget how just convenient and easy it is because you get used to it here. And then mm -hmm. when I go back to the U.S., it's like I didn't bring my wallet with me. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I can't pay with Bitcoin here. Yeah, I just can't dine and dash. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh I, I think sometimes we underestimate uh, how available it is and how much easier it, it makes life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm paid in Bitcoin. You know, it's it's I think just more and more it's becoming circular uh, and, you know, it's being integrated with more and more apps, with more and more restaurants, little by little. I think one of the biggest challenges and one of the the issues that the Bitcoin community has is they need to think how normal people think. Uh, most Bitcoiners, for better or for worse, are not normal uh, in, in some positive ways and some negative ways. Uh, and they need to think like most people are not idealists, they're pragmatists. Uh, they want to pay with real things in the real world. Uh, and again, that's something that's really only done here. But I encourage everyone. I mean, there are uh, wonderful projects around the world. I don't want to sound like El Salvador is the only place. There's great things in Guatemala. Uh, with Bitcoin Lake, there's uh, the Bitcoin Beach project in Brazil, Brazil, yeah. South Africa. I mean, like there's a lot there's a lot going on. And so I don't want to, you know, pull away like you guys are the, are, are doing great things. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but, um, but I think even they would acknowledge that theirs is more just centered on their project. Where in El Salvador, yes. you have the availability to, you know, you could be 100 miles away from here and still find places that accept Bitcoin. So Absolutely. I think that's something that's that's a little bit different mm -hmm. um what what would you tell the people when people question like or say well salvador hasn't really benefited from the adoption of bitcoin there's not that many people actually using it it's not you know really benefiting the local people mm. what what would you respond to somebody that comes with that criticism yeah um Benefiting, benefiting. So, so Bitcoin as a, as a success. So, so really, there's a couple of things. Um, the adoption of Bitcoin is a symbol. First, it's a symbol to the world of of what what the administration here is, what El Salvador is for, um, and if anyone who's a supporter of Bitcoin, I mean, typically they say Bitcoin is freedom. So, adopting Bitcoin is adopting freedom uh, at a national level. Uh, so I'd say I'd say that that's a really big thing. It's inspiring uh, to me. That's the reason I came down here was I was inspired by that. Um, and it's a symbol that, you know, Bitcoin is one part of it. But I noticed that Bitcoin meetups, you know, a lot of Bitcoin meetups, you don't just talk about Bitcoin. You kind of say Bitcoin is a filter. If you're interested in freedom, if you're kind of interested in th these things, then you're going to talk about other things. You're going to talk about regenerative agriculture. You're going to talk about different alternative health you know techniques tools medicines um so i think like that extends right so you say we like bitcoin but then there's kind of this filter so you're bringing in really interesting people um and so the country benefits i mean human capital is really a main part of what determines a successful country i mean people talk about you know how really uh high quality immigration it's the united states a lot of founders of of some of the most famous tech companies have been immigrants in the united states elon musk uh, uh, of course, a whole host of others. Um, so, you know, it's sort of, sort of a symbol in that regard. And I think like as far as, you know, um, tourism, I mean, tourism in this country has exploded uh, for better, or for worse. You know, I know some people are like, I wish, you know, some of those Americans, they, they stayed away or the Canadian, you know, whomever. Um, but like on a financial level, um, tourism, you know, has definitely benefited the the economy of, of the country. Um, uh, I hope I hope there's efforts to like kind of protect uh some of the natural some of the natural lands keep keep some of the beaches virgin keep you know maybe preserve uh so so i'm 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 definitely a, you know support that as well do you see it all or do you think there will be in the future any type of backlash from the local community from the the influx of <clears throat> of foreigners from around the world um have you 
seen anything like that or do you think that that's something we need to be concerned about? I think it's something to always be aware of. Um, and when you're in a country and you're not, you know, citizen, you're not born there or something, then you're really a visitor and there's sort of a higher standard that I think is expected. Um, so like, you know, I, I think of this, uh, like sometimes I'll break a rule in the United States, you know, maybe I won't, maybe, you know, sometimes. Um, but like here, you know, I'm, I'm more likely to, to not do that. It's a, it's kind of a symbol of respect. So I think like anyone coming should kind of come with that perspective. Um, I think we also need to be, you know, mindful of who we, you know, invite people who are asking, you know, about El Salvador, you know, are, might be our neighbors, might be new citizens of the country, might be residents. Um, so I think it's important that, you know, we, we pick the right people, um, because El Salvador is a special place. Um, I, I think it's the only one, uh. I think my fate is sealed with El Salvador. Uh, so, so I believe in the country, but I, I believe that, yeah, people who come here need to, to be aware of, you know, themselves. No, I, that's one thing I've come to appreciate about Max and Stacy is they've kind of really pushed on keeping scammers and, and other groups out. And, and sometimes in ways that are harsher than, than would be my personality. But I think we've seen, especially as we've seen all these blowups this last couple of years that just because something's going to bring in in a few jobs doesn't necessarily mean it's something that's good for the country. And so, and of course, there's no you know perfect way to do that. But I do think it's important that that there is um, you know a concerted effort to make sure that the right people are coming, like you were saying, because there can be some people that are just unhappy with the rest of the world and they come here. Be, but you you know start to talk to them, they realize they've like had falling outs everywhere else they were and. If they expect this to be the perfect place, that's it's probably not going to work here either. So yeah, I like that. Um, well, what else haven't we covered? I think you had another project. Yes, uh, I work on a project uh, with a the friend of mine. Uh, it's called Chadnet, and uh, Chadnet is uh, the best. It's the greatest website on the internet. Um, I think, do we have do we have the logo there, Andy? Can we throw that up? Yeah, um, Chadnet is. Uh, Chadnet's a valuable resource for a lot of uh, a lot of very intelligent people. Um, it's a both kind of a publishing, you know. Well, what should I say? Uh, just incorporated. So I need to. I think Ch Chadnet basically aggregates different uh, different sources, articles, pieces, um, books from from across the internet, from across um, you know, kind of a certain sphere of the internet uh, that's um, you know. It was sort of founded during the COVID, the COVID crisis, sort of the aftermath, or sort of during that, um, as a place to find research on on different health, uh, you know, different um, nutritionists, different health techniques, Th things that were being scrubbed from other parts of the internet. Yes, exactly, Mike. So I think, you know, uh, AI, you know, can be used for good, can be used for bad. It can it can be used to erase uh, entire parts of the internet. Uh, it can also be used more maliciously to to simply tweak a part of a book. Uh, so I think it's valuable to have these these primary sources. So I think, yeah, Chadnet, Chadnet's almost like an Internet archive for really rare, interesting, interesting uh, manuscripts. And I think you said you incorporated that also as a business here in El Salvador. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. So this is this is the Palestra, the Palestra logo, um, the, the Chadnet logo is uh there we go is um it's chad in all of his glory um so so yes. i i know the chad figure but i don't know the history of that do you know the the he's not a virgin okay. uh no I'm, I'm it's you know those memes it's like chad versus uh versus virgin um but he he basically is just a symbol of uh of confidence i okay. mean look at that jawline you know that mohawk uh he he kind of knows something that that we all you know need to know so Anyway, he's um, he's pointing the way. And so what what is the idea of this as a as a business I mean, beyond so, it being just a repository for these? So it's really articles. yeah, it's really I mean, we, we don't charge at all for accessing the website. We basically just want to be a resource for people. Um, if they have something interesting they found, you know, on the Internet, they can always submit. And we it's very so it's you guys very, review everything before. It's, it's very curated. Uh, so we're not truly like a Wikipedia where, you know, it's kind of user. Uh, we're looking at different, you know, ways to scale uh, because there's kind of a limitation uh, with that. 
but uh, but we value the curation, and I think our our users and our visitors do as well. Is there much crossover between this user base and and the Palestra? To some extent, um, you know, Palestra is is based around health, so some of the health articles, uh, which are some of the most common ones on Chadnet, are uh, are also important to some of our users. We, um, you know, we have uh, Ray Pete, uh, who is a nutritionist, uh, who's teachings are getting a bit more popular in certain parts of the internet. Uh, we're, we're one of the, the main sources for some of his writings, uh, along with his personal website. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, you know, Peter's, Peter's and Palestrians, uh, there's definitely some overlap there. So I'm curious, I'm, I'm old and, and married now. So what, what is for, for young singles that are coming down here, mm -hmm. what is the social and dating life like? Is it, vastly different than, than the US or how have you found just stuff outside of work? Yeah, like I think Salvadorans overall are like really friendly, like outgoing people like want to uh, want to have friends, want to hang out, want to, uh, you know, go out, go out, do different stuff on the weekends, camping, surfing, going to the beach. Um, you know, there's a lot of people in the US like that too. Uh, but I think like Salvadorans are just like a little bit friendlier. Um, like a little bit funnier, you know, just like, yeah, yeah. They'll like mess with you a bit. Uh, yeah, they're good. They, I know they like events. My, my daughter just graduated from high school. She actually commute, both my kids commute to San Salvador for school and, okay. and she went to the American school there and I've never seen anything like it. We went to this graduation party. There's 1400 people there at this graduation party. And it was like, You'd have thought we were at the Grammys or something, the way people are dressed up and all the events. And so I know they're definitely very event oriented. Yes. Um, You're making me feel like I should have gotten an invite to this, Mike. Uh, it was next uh, year. Please. Yes, it was. It was definitely something else. I was not prepared for it, but it uh, and sometimes I have to remind myself, hey, and I'm, I'm more of a like get things done. Mm -hmm. and and the people here can be a lot more social and so i have to remind myself that they're enjoying themselves more than i am so yeah it's a good a, reminder there's a patience uh that's certainly required because like you know i'd say like europeans you know north americans are a bit more direct you know like get it done you know new york you know these like this pace right um but in that we lose a lot of beauty of life you know there's sort of like this you know this this way of kind of going going uh, that, that Salvadorans, you know, kind of a lot of other parts of the world have, uh, maybe even Southern Europe um, has as well. Um, I notice even my correspondence with somebody, I'll like start off just directly to the point, like, hey, did you get this? And they're like, hello, good morning. They like go yes. through all the pleasantries. I'm like, okay, I forgot I'm being rude. I need to ask you how your day is before we get to these things. Yeah, while, while you say this, I need to, I need to say, Renato Salazar, uh, Thank you for advising me on this. I, I was I sent a message in a group chat like two days ago that was exactly like this. I was like, I ent I just started with a question. Did you do this? And he's like, he sends me a personal message. He's like, bro, you need to not be like this. <laughs> he's just he's a great guy. Um, Renato's a, Renato, I know Renato quite <laughs> yeah. well. He's, yeah, uh, yeah, he's he's a dear friend. So that's that's funny. Yeah, I yeah. have to be reminded that too. They're like, hey. Mm. If you don't greet people, if you don't, I, I just assume that, you know, they don't want to waste their time on all those things. But for them, that's the enjoyment in life. And I, I yeah. want to have more of that attitude. Precisely. So I think that's a good thing about living here. You're kind of reminded of, of those things. Um, mm -hmm. What what are some of the. I don't want to say negatives, but what have been some of the more challenging cultural things for you to adjust to? Are there certain things that you like, I don't know if I'm ever going to be okay with this or I would just like to give people a realistic picture. They're thinking of moving here so they don't think it's all yes. rainbows and unicorns. So. Yes. Um, I think that one thing that has, has, has been a, a bit of a learning, um, you know, there's a learning curve is honking. Uh, Salvadorans love to honk. Uh, I just got a car a couple weeks ago, but even I kind of knew this before, um, you know, just be patient with that. Uh, also, and it's not even like a honk that they're mad. They'll just honk like, "Hey, I'm here." Yes. Like, like I drive with people. I'm like, "Why are you honking on them?" Oh, just let them know I'm here, so they don't come over in my lane. I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, those are the ones that are hardest for me to adjust to." Actually, I get when someone's mad, uh, but I don't get when someone's happy and honking. Um, uh, there's also walking on the sidewalk. Um, 
just the way San Salvador was structured, there was just not many sidewalks. So if you're walking on a sidewalk or crossing the road, people will try to, will run you over. Uh, don't walk. You, you don't looking. have the right of way. Pedestrians do not have the right of way. Yes. Our legal correspondent. Uh, yeah. So I think those are probably the two, yeah. you know, two, two things, uh, but overall, you know, uh, pretty good. Uh, my, minor things. Yeah. I have a, one thing I always tell my wife, it drives me crazy. We'll be at the supermarket or something and somebody's coming the other way and they see you're trying to get by, but they'll just sit there talking to their friends. And when you ask them, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll move. But I'm like, you see, I'm trying to get by. But I think it just gets back to that. They like that personal interaction. Thing. Yeah, you got to so, yeah, introduce the Yeah, <laughs> there's there's a lot of little things like that that mm. you got to just learn to go with the flow. But like I said, they're very minor in the in the bigger scheme of things yeah so i think with events you made me think about something just going back the uh it felt like when i when i came here that like every week or every two weeks there was like the event in san salvador or or in the country and like it almost like in high school like if you're at the event like you're at the event like you're important but if you're not at the event it's like you're irrelevant this week uh i felt like that like that social scene like there's the concerts there's the the soccer game there's the american school graduation uh, well which, even even a lot of the programs we do here like there's a graduation ceremony for everything where you get a certificate mm -hmm. where you get and it took me a while to learn that, that that's important to me i'm like no they're not going to want to show up for this they're like no if you don't do that they're going to feel <laughs> like it wasn't something that wa was valued and so there's a lot of those cultural things that it's just been good for me to to get to know over the years. Not not that I've completely adapted, but, sure. but my kids growing up here, they're very much more like that. They have the, that same mentality about things. And That's so great. It's, it's funny watching the, the difference in, in those things. So yeah. Um, anything else you think that uh, people should know about El Salvador or stuff that you're excited about to, to cover? Yeah, I know you're working on some things that you're not ready to divulge yet, but I'm yeah, there, well, we've so. got the we've got this event uh, in a couple months. That'll be pretty fun. Um, but yeah, if you're thinking, and is that something people can they got to become a member to participate in, or is is that are you guys actively soliciting members, or is this something that you kind of personally choose people that apply? Or yeah, no? send send through an application. Um, I would say, you know, uh, yeah, members are, are welcome to, to to attend. We'll have some other guest speakers. We'll have other invited guests as well. Um, so that, yeah, highly encourage you, you know, uh, follow my Twitter um, and, and follow, you know, stay tuned for that. Um, but I mean, come why, to, why don't you make sure they know your Twitter handle? What's what's your uh, it is two citizenships, um, two TWO citizenships and uh, any, yeah. Any background on that or is that uh, too doxing for you? I have two citizenships. OK. Um, but I, I uh, yeah, no, I think El Salvador is, is great, uh, as I've said, probably, you know, you know, during the podcast here. Um, yeah. If you're in the country thinking of coming, have questions, I, you know, I think I'm a valuable resource. Happy to happy to help. Any any plans for three citizenships as you spend more time here? One hundred percent. All right. Well, we we don't know. Maybe one of those already is. You know. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> I uh, I think I have one more year of residency I need to 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 apply. Unfortunately, for the first long time, I just was on tourist visa. We just we were going in and out so much that mm -hmm. I didn't wasn't thinking ahead about wanting to rack up those years. But you need five years before you can apply for a passport so I'm, yeah I'm i might just close. go the, the marriage route maybe you know that's short that's the cut. quicker route it's a shorter that, that's the quicker the, route the quicker route just make sure you make the right choice because uh, that's a big choice isn't it i, I tell people <laughs> you can get everything else in life wrong your choices but get the married one right and you'll still do better than if you get everything else right and get the married one wrong so uh fortunately i got the married one right so uh, makes life a lot easier. But I see friends that are in marriages that struggle and it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Tough place to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah. Don't, so don't jump into that just to get your uh, passport. Fair, sure. fair, fair. Well, you know, it's a trade. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Agreed. Uh, so other than Twitter, where else can people follow you? That's the only place. Okay. Yeah. Go to visit Uh That's another place. You'll probably find something interesting. But, uh, but yeah. All right. 
Well, I appreciate you uh, making the drive down here and uh, looking forward to following your companies as they grow and seeing uh, El Salvador turn into the, the light of the world here that I think it's going to be. So Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thanks.